Hello and welcome to Recording Hacks. I'm Peterson Goodwin from DIY Recording Equipment. And today I am thrilled and privileged to be here at Shure headquarters, uh, 10 miles underground with John Bourne, yep. product specialist and engineer. And we're going to be talking about dynamic microphones. And who better to talk about it with than someone from Shure, who are, of course, well known for the SM57 and 58 and the SM7 and yeah. lots of other dynamic mics. So thank you, John. Thanks for coming out. All right. Um, well, let's jump right into it. Um, I was thinking it would, be, it would be cool to talk about this going through the microphone as if I'm a, I'm a sound wave. And then we'll kind of do a sound wave's point of view through the mm -hmm. microphone, OK? So, so let's say I'm, I'm talking right on the microphone. And for the moment, let's ignore all these real world problems like directionality and, and all that. Yeah. And just say, I'm a sound wave hitting the microphone. Uh, what happens? What happens, yes. All right. Well, we have a few. We can't, we can't talk about that unless we start talking about the components of a dynamic mic. OK. And there's a few important ones that we're going to need to call out here, uh, um, mainly being the magnet, okay. right? So uh, we have a couple of components. We have the magnet. And uh, that is, sits inside of something called a pole piece or a pole mm. cup. OK. And uh, that just holds the magnet and actually directs the magnetic field okay. that's being created by that magnet. OK. Um, we have the diaphragm, and that's typically made out of mylar. Okay. And uh, that is... That's what I hear crinkling there? Yeah, mylar? that was the crinkling noise you nice. That was me crinkling the diaphragm. Okay. It's nice. Um, doesn't affect the response, though. It's going to be fine. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, the uh, attached to that diaphragm is a voice coil, and okay. that's normally a, a, a loop of wire. Okay. Uh, and normally made out of copper or maybe aluminum or a copper clad aluminum of some sort. Conductive wire. Some sort of conductive wire. And uh -huh. uh, that coil is attached to the diaphragm, and it sits uh, around the magnet. OK. Uh, it doesn't touch the magnet, and it doesn't touch the pole piece, but it sits what, what we call inside of a gap. OK. And uh, that magnetic field is perpendicular to the coil, okay. so it inducts a magnetic field, inducts a voltage onto that coil. OK. And as sound hits the diaphragm, it changes that voltage inside that magnetic field, okay. which we can capture that voltage. Okay. And uh, we basically take two leads off of that coil. All right. And uh, we have some sort of voltage that we can work with. Now. Okay. Great. Okay. So that was a very, very quick run through the microphone. Um, let's just break down a couple of those things before we move on. Mm -hmm. um, so we're a sound wave, uh, an acoustical mechanical phenomenon, and. Um, What's the first thing we hit? The first thing you hit, besides a resonator cap, which we'll, we'll, we'll get into later, but uh -huh. the first thing you hit is the diaphragm. OK. Yeah. And great. And then, so at this point, we're still mechanical vibration, right? And, yep. And we're, we're still we're... mechanical vibration at that okay. point. OK. Great. And we're, so we're moving the mylar, the very thin diaphragm, mm -hmm. which is attached to the coil, yep. the, the, our coil of wire. Yep. OK. Now, this is where we're transducing. Right? Exactly. We're turning one form of energy, acoustical, into another form. So what's happening right here? So right now, the, that acoustical energy is actually minusculely moving the diaphragm, but it's moving it. Uh -huh. um, we, won't, we wouldn't be able to see it, but okay. it does move the, diaf does move the diaphragm. And uh -huh. because that coil is attached to that diaphragm, it, it's going to move that coil also, right. that coil of wire. Okay. But what turns it into electrical, electrical energy is the, that magnet, and that magnet okay. being perpendicular to the coil is creating a magnetic field. Okay. And we're directing that magnetic field with the pole piece. Okay. And directing the mass of that flux, of that magnetic flux, okay. through the gap, uh, right into the, where the coil sits. Okay. And that, by, by creating that magnetic field and inducing it on that coil, as, it cha as the sound changes the, the, the pressure and the voltage right. of the diaphragm, it, and, and conversely, changes the coil, the voltage along the coil. The voltage along the coil. Yep. OK, so that's, that's just kind of a property of the world, that when you have changing magnet magnetic field, you get a changing electric Yep, current. when you create a magnetic field perpendic perpendicular to some, some conductive method of wire or coil, right. uh, you, can create, you can create voltage across that wire. OK. And uh, just like a speaker works similar to a microphone, there's uh -huh. a coil, voice coil. There's a cone, which mm -hmm. would be the myelide diaphragm in the microphone's case. Okay. Uh, and we send voltage to that coil, and it 
changes the voltage of that coil in the cone, and we hear music and sound. Right. Okay. Uh, and we're so we're doing the same thing, just in the other direction. Yep. Just in the other direction. Okay. Yeah. And so that's what makes it dynamic microphones. Um, well, when I first got into engineering, the way I remembered it or understood it was dynamics don't need power. That that was kind that's of the, the distinguishing of factor. Yeah. Of it. Okay. So it's so that's that's why yeah. I guess it's just turning that mechanical engine engineering energy into yeah. into electrical engine energy through through the use of a magnetic field okay through the use of a magnet great so. easy enough um, so what happens so now we've got our signal um, as a voltage mm -hmm. what where do we go from there well the signal we could depending on the properties of that signal take it and send it down an XLR connect cable if we wanted to okay and uh, we do do that right um, but there's some things wrong there's some things that we're going to want to fix okay. before we do that. Okay. And uh, that's in the next chapter. Okay. Let's, so let's talk about that in, in part two. Yeah. Um, I, I do notice, though, that after the, the coil, um, we have this thing. We got a transformer. Yep. Okay. So what, what is this doing to our, our virgin signal? Our virgin signal is uh, the transformer here. Uh -huh. uh, so the uh, transformer takes that energy that is actually very low impedance and uh -huh. very weak in signal. Okay. And the transformer, this transformer in the 57 and in the unidine cartridge uh -huh. uh, is a step-up transformer. Okay. So we uh, step up that voltage uh, and conversely step up the impedance. Okay. So the, there's, a, uh, there's a certain impedance to that uh, coil mm -hmm. that, is, that sits inside, uh, around the magnet. Okay. Uh, that impedance is very low. Uh, so we have some room to go in terms of output impedance okay. uh, without breaking too many things. Right, uh, right. So a transformer gets us a higher output impedance okay. um, and also uh, gives us more signal level. Signal, more signal level meaning a more sensitive yep, microphone. Yep, a more sensitive microphone. We get about 10 dB more signal level uh, mm -hmm. through the use of, a, of this transformer in the 57. Okay. And we gain about 200, uh, 200 more ohms on the impedance. Okay, great. So. All right. It gives us a little bit more manageable signal to work with. Sure. You know, you sure. Could, you need less could, gain and less yep. feedback and all, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Great. Well, so that, that seems simple enough, right? We've got, our, we've got our diaphragm, our magnet, our coil, our transformer. Um, but where things really get interesting is when we try to put that system into the real world, which is what we'll be covering in the next chapter. Yes.